So here in New York City, we just finished Climate Week NYC. I was looking through their website and I saw they have over 150 events throughout New York during this week. They have panel discussions, there's concerts, there's exhibitions, there's seminars, and many more events that go on. So according to their website, they say they're the biggest Climate Week event in the world to drive even greater momentum on climate action. And so recently, I was at a panel discussion at the Sheen Center called Women, Climate, and Sports. I was sitting in this event, listening to the speakers, and I felt so inspired by them because these women are so amazing. The things that they're doing, they all work in such major organizations doing such important work in sustainability. One of the women actually on the panel, her name is Jennifer Hershey. She's the co-founder of the Broadway Green Alliance. And what she did, apparently she was the person to instigate the change of every single light bulb in every marquee on Broadway. They said that was 100,000 light bulbs. And she said it ended up saving about 700 tons of carbon. I was like, what? That's just so amazing. And to live in New York, and now I'm always gonna think that when I'm looking at all the Broadway lights. Cause we don't think about that too often of how, how damaging the effects are of all these lights and all this pollution and all this energy that we waste on a daily basis. And so she works with Broadway and they also talked about how they're kind of in little fights with Playbill because there's 44 million Playbills that get distributed every single year. 44 million. And I have my little Playbill collection that I keep. But like every time you go to a Broadway show, you get the little Playbill with the yellow and it's just this exciting thing to have. But is it really necessary? 44 million of these a year. And so another panelist, Lauren Tracy, who is the, she works with the USTA, and she talked about how they were busy gearing up for the US Open. And their whole plan was to make everything in the food area compostable. And so they were like going through all the plans, getting all ready. And it was the day of, like the US Open was starting and they were doing a walkthrough. And she was like, dang it, the little coffee stirs, those plastic things that you stir the coffee with. And she's talked about how we have to give ourselves the grace to not be so hard on ourselves. And there's always gonna be mistakes that are gonna be made. And it's such a detail oriented thing to think about all these things um, in sustainability and they just overall talked about how it's a learning experience. Dr. Alan Hershkowitz, who was a moderator of this panel, he's the chairman and the founding director of Sports and Sustainability International. He talked about how he got into the sports side of things because he's very much interested in paper, specifically the toilet paper industry, and he talked about how there's ecologically rare irreplaceable forests being cut down for a product that we use for like five seconds. And we use so much of this and it's just so interesting to think about how the products we use on a daily basis and the impact that our own lives have and our choices. But then obviously we shouldn't go around feeling guilty for just existing in the world because we do need these products obviously. But there's obviously always better ways to do things and improvements that can be made. And so Alan was talking about how he met with the Philadelphia Eagles and he found out that the toilet paper that they were using actually came from an eagle habitat. Really bad branding, right? As soon as they found that out, they were like, oh no. So they immediately changed that and then they were like, what else can we do? Because a lot of the times, they just don't know and it takes someone else to come in with the details to find out what can we do better. There's just so much to think about in a daily basis of like the products we use, where do the products come from? How are they being made? the shipping. It, it was even mentioned about meat. Someone in the audience was like, you know, if we all, if we got rid of beef in all the stadiums, that would have such an enormous positive impact. And then I went home and I did research on beef and meat, and that's actually a huge, huge contributor to the problem in the environment. All what I was hearing during this panel discussion really got me thinking about so much in my own life. And I actually took an environmental science class in my earlier years of college for two years. And at the time, I took the class with my friend Rachel. <laughs> we are about to go into our science class. See, we've got, this is environmental science. Now, where are we? School. We're at school. We're at school. We're so we would just goof off and we laughed a lot and we just didn't take it super seriously. Right, so we got the food web, we right? aced this we class did she today. just said and we had to go around and help everybody else 
But I remember there was one day that this video we watched really struck me and it was about our carbon footprint. So our professor put on this video, I remember it was showing pretty much our entire life from like when you're a baby you use like this amount of diapers and then when you're older you're drinking all this coffee in the coffee cups and then all these products throughout our lives. Back then at the time I was super mindful of my carbon footprint and I was doing everything I could. Okay, how do I reduce this carbon footprint and what can I do better? And I was thinking, okay, I need to compost everything. And at the time I had a job. At every door there, were, there was a trash can, there was a recycling can, and there was a compost area. So there were three different places you could put your trash. And they were clearly labeled, everything was marked. When I first got hired, they took us through like, oh, by the way, um, you can help out customers if they're confused, just let them know what's the proper bin to put your trash in. If it's like a paper product, you can compost. If it's food, you can compost. If it's plastic, you recycle, you know, things like that. And they had little diagrams. They had even little examples of what you put in each bin. And so I was like, great, that's great. And then in my environmental science class, we had to brainstorm ways we, we can um, lessen our carbon footprint. One of my ideas was, oh, I can compost more at work and I can be more mindful of the products that I use and maybe I won't pick up a million napkins, maybe I'll just take one napkin or take exactly what I need and not waste any materials, food, paper, plastic, anything like that. Saving the world. And I was just so inspired and I was doing little things every day to make things better. Instead of taking plastic bags, you bring your own bag when you go shopping, things like that. And so one day while I was at work, I noticed the janitors who took out the trash, they went to the recycling, they dumped everything in. They went to the compost, they dumped everything in. They went to the trash, they dumped everything in to one giant black plastic bag. And I told my manager about it later. I was like, by the way, and I saw this happen multiple days in a row. And I told her, why are we throwing everything into one trash bag? Don't we do compost and recycling here? Don't we I'm trying to save the environment? And she, she basically told me, oh, well, there's no way to ensure that customers actually put everything in the correct bin, so what we do is we just mix it all together anyway. And I remember being so infuriated by this. I was so angry. I was like, why are we lying to customers? We're acting like... And here I am. So, two reasons why I was angry. One, in my personal life, I was trying so hard to compost, recycle everything, do the right thing, save the environment, and then... Meanwhile, everything I was doing just doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they just throw it all into the landfills anyway. And I just felt so discouraged by that. Second reason why I was so angry is because we're basically putting on this front to the world. Oh, look at us. We're doing such good things. We're such a great company. We compost, we recycle. Meanwhile, everything just gets thrown into the garbage anyway. So yeah, there's that. So I was super angry by this and I'm like, you know what? Why do I try so hard? Why does it matter? Little things that I do, end of the day, doesn't even matter. They just all throw it away anyway. It can feel kind of hopeless in that regard. And then also during my environmental, being environmentally friendly little era of my life, it just felt so discouraging because I looked at the people around me and I was trying so hard and then I'm like, oh, well this person, look at them just taking all their plastic, taking all these plastic bags and like, they don't need that many napkins, why are they taking so many napkins? It's like you're wasting all this paper, people who just throw things away. It would make me so angry. I'm like, can you people not see the world is dying before our eyes and you're just taking all this plastic and paper? So it can feel super discouraging because what can our little, what can our little things we do, how can that make a difference? I feel like over time I just kind of numbed myself and stopped thinking about it and didn't really care so much anymore because when you care, the more that you care about something, the angrier you're going to get. And it's easier on ourselves, I think, to just kind of pretend, oh, it doesn't matter. So when I was sitting in this panel event, all these memories started kind of going into my mind and I was thinking about this. And at the Sheen Center, it's a Catholic affiliated organization. So I was thinking about religion and faith and the environment. Pope Francis wrote a document called Laudato Si, Care for the Common Home. And in the Pope Francis documentary, there was one scene where the camera, I will never forget this image, it's like burned into my memory, but the camera panned along a beach and it just showed the water filled with plastic and the, the whole entire beach was covered with trash. 
and it was just really eye-opening. Sometimes in our lives it's easier to just think, oh, out of sight, out of mind, we don't have to think about something, we don't have to deal with something, you know, you throw your things away, it goes away, it just magically disappears. So I'm sitting in the Sheen Center thinking about faith and the environment and these problems and how as humans what we do, the most common thing that we do to make ourselves feel better about our actions is to just pretend like it's not a big deal if our actions don't align with that. It's easier to reject that and to just do whatever we want, not have to feel bad about it. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. Even if it is a big deal in the grand scheme of things, we kind of tell ourselves lies to make ourselves feel better about what we're doing, if that makes sense. And so I have done this many times in like many situations, but lately I'm like, wow, I really do this the most in my life right now with the environment because we can think oh we're you know i'm like living a pretty good life i feel like i'm doing the right things but are we really if you really take a good look at your life the daily choices that you make all of us can do better in pretty much every area so just something to think about but we constantly justify our actions tell ourselves that things aren't really a big deal doesn't really matter but it really does so Moral of the story, <laughs> point in this video is our actions really do matter on a daily basis. The little things and the big things. Something I've been thinking about. It's easier sometimes to just tune things out and live in ignorance or apathy because it's easier on us to just not care sometimes. But it's important to care. It can be hard to accept reality of life sometimes because that requires us making some tough changes in our personal lives, whatever that might look like for us, but it's important too. So I encourage everyone to just take a little, not a little, a big look at your life and just examine what are the choices that I'm making, what is the type of person that I'm becoming, what is my impact on the world, and we might think, oh well, what we do doesn't really matter, but it really does, all the choices that we make really do have an impact. So yeah, that is all I have to say about that. Make good choices, everyone. It's easy to just be comfortable in our daily routines of living, not really think about our choices or the impact that they have, but sometimes you just have to shake things up and look at your life and think, wow, I really probably should make some changes. So climate week, New York City, those are my thoughts. I really need to make some changes. I'm very wasteful. Hopefully you're inspired to do the same.